Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is changing out the brake pads on my 2011 Honda CBF1000 GT. So this is the model that has the uh, twin three caliper piston, three caliper, three piston calipers up front uh, and the same caliper on the back. It's basically three of the same calipers, linked brakes, all that good stuff. Uh, the pads look like this. This is what the pads look like. Um, so it's kind of, you know, long and the pin hole at the back. Um, but that's the one we're going to be doing today. Oh, I'll get down here on the ground. And yeah, so if you want to see how to do this, um, please stick around. So if you want to do this the utter bum way I do it, all you need is new brake pads, a size 8 mil uh, socket or ratchet or something, and a size 12 mil socket ratchet, some brake cleaner, and a screwdriver. That's that's literally all I use to do the other side. It's actually really straightforward to be honest, which is which is nice. Um, the one thing I will mention now to remember is when uh, yeah the one thing to remember is when you do this job. Um, when you're doing between the calipers, when you do one and you swap to the other side, just make sure you give your, your brake lever a couple of squeezes just to pop the pistons back out. Otherwise you force lots of fluid back up into the reservoir and you could over, overfill it or overflow it or there might just be too much fluid in the system. Um, so that's why, why just, yeah, just do what, do what I said, right? Just give it a couple of squeezes. Anyway, I suppose we'll, we'll take that off now. So what you're wanting to do is this bolt here, this is the eight, okay? And my advice is open that now, before you loosen everything else, because it's actually tight enough. You just want to loosen it. You don't need to open it the whole way. Uh, it just makes it, it's going to make it a lot easier um, to loosen it now. If you if you don't loosen this first, you're going to end up putting these bolts back in anyway. So you're better off just doing it now. Then what you want to do is take off these two bolts here, one here and one here. And these are the two 12 mils. Again, these shouldn't, these shouldn't be too hard to take off. Grab yourself an old rag or something and give those bolts a good clean off. So just get off all the old copper grease because that copper grease is probably going to have collected some dirt and stuff over time. And now there you go, we have a nice, we have a nice fresh bolt. Um, it's it's that easy and then just throw on some new copper grease. Oh I lied! I lied! You're also going to be wanting a tub of copper grease and a pair of gloves. I would recommend wearing gloves with uh, brake pads because there can be there can be some nasty stuff. There can be some nasty stuff in brake pads, so. Anyway, that's pretty clean now. So next what you wanna do is just slide the whole brake caliper assembly back out. This one's gonna be worse because this is the side with all the extra stuff hanging on it. Uh, I think I can still do it. We might have to release this thing up here. Didn't have to do this on the other side. Yeah, one second. This little assembly up here where all the hoses go, uh, I'm just gonna open that off. So now that that bolt is out, um, it just means we'll be able to move this assembly, which lets us take out the whole caliper, like so. So now that we have the caliper out, all you wanna do is um, grab your screwdriver. Now obviously, you don't you don't have to use a screwdriver if you wanna you know, reuse your pads. I don't really care about reusing them, so I just shove the piston back using the old pads like this and that's it and then we want to go back to our 8 mil and this little bolt here what this is is goes through those little holes uh, at the bottom of the pads that I showed you at the very start and it's just like their retention bolt so you want to turn that out it has lots of threads threads then you literally just grab it and work it the rest of the way out like so. Then your pads just come out one by one. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I'm, I'm actually glad. I'm actually glad I didn't change these pads because these are like, I don't, can you see that? Ooh. Come on, yeah. They're overheated. So that bluing, um, I mean, the, the, these pads are still probably fine to use, to be honest. It's just, does anyone want to be my full-time camera person? Make my life so much easier. Uh, these pads are probably, monkey butt. These pads are still probably okay for, for a while. Um, it's just, it's kind of like how, how I generally do things. I didn't know how long they were in there. So I thought it better to change them, but you can see 
or can you see? These ones are gone kind of uh, blue. So that, that's probably from the track day because I did, I did start to get brake fade. And it also looks like these are worn a lot more than the left side. Um, it looks like my right side is kind of like the master side, everything's fed off that. So that's probably why they are more like that. But I mean, that's okay. Um, I, I don't mind spending money on brake pads, even when they probably could have done a bit longer because I mean, they're your brake pads, they're really important. So this little, this little hole here, you see that? That's the, that's the place that the retention pin goes through. So the, all that does is when you pop these in, um, I'll show you later, but you just kind of hold it with the retention pin and screw it in. And that's just to hold them in place and let them slide along that bolt um, as they wear, uh, basically. So they'll, you know, as they squeeze in and whatnot, uh, they'll just slide along the bolt. It just keeps them straight, just keeps them straight. So pretty much everything will have some form of retention bolt. Some of them have them up here in the middle. You'll see like pin going through. Some of them have two pins. Um, but yeah, the perfectly good way to do it. To be honest, I'm, I'm still really disappointed because one thing that about this CBF, uh, to be honest, one of the only things I can actually fault it on, I suppose, really is it's braking is kind of poor. Um, it's not bad, it still brakes, it's just not great, which is a pity because it's a big bike. I was pretty quick on the track. Now, next what you wanna do, this, uh, look, other people might not do this or other people might say I don't do it enough. Um, but all I do is I literally just get my brake cleaner and just move everything away. Hey, why are you falling out of there for? You're supposed to be staying in there, buddy. I just give everything a good, a good rinse out and then a, a quick rub. And the reason, the reason I do that is because, you know, brake dust is, you know, it's not great for stuff. So it'll get in, it'll get into your seals uh, on your actual brakes. And it'll just basically reduce their life. So it's it's better to just, when you have your pads out, and even, you know, if you do a track day or something like that, uh, rip out your pads anyway, and just give the whole thing a clean. Like, I'll show you now in a second. In there, those pistons now, they're nice and, they're nice and clean now. Um, could they be cleaner? Absolutely. Uh, is it enough for me? Also, absolutely. All I wanted to do um, was pretty much just make sure that you know, the bulk of that dirt and grime was out of there, which I think I've done now. So yeah, what I'm gonna do now is get this pin and just clean up all that, that dirty, crappy stuff um, off the, the center of it so that it can, it can just prolong its life pretty much because, you know, if you leave all that crap on it, it'll just start corroding. So I just like to give the clean off. Yeah, go from there. So this is what I was talking about. I don't know, can you see that? Come on, bolt. Focus on the bolt. Okay, it's not gonna focus on the bolt. Here, yeah, there we go. Uh, just clean up this whole, oh, come on camera. Clean up this whole section along here. Um, obviously watch this little rubber gasket. I don't know why it won't focus. Focus, please. <laughs> why are you like this? Yeah, so this rubber gasket down here, don't obviously hit that with anything, but just sand off this piece here. And then I, what I do is I'll just wipe out the treads as well. Same with these, so whoever, ooh, ooh. whoever used this before uh, was a human after my own heart. Come on, focus, like seriously. Why camera, why? What are you doing, Splat? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, anyway, these, these treads you can, oh. Uh, yeah. There you go. Those treads, uh, you wanna just wipe them off and put new copper grease on them. Like, ah, in my opinion, um, I will always put copper grease onto these because, you know, the heat and stuff, it stops them, stops them sticking. The thing I am still devastated about is the fact that whoever had this bike before me did put double H pads in there because I really thought, I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna improve my braking on the CBF, but I'm not. Um, still haven't done the back brakes though, so they might be, they might be something we can improve. Hopefully, hopefully they're not double H. Um, but yeah, clean up your bolts. Clean up your little pin and get yourself a can of brake cleaner and just spray the whole thing down, wipe it out. Make it nice and clean, like cleaner than it was because we care about our bikes here on the Gorilla Biker. So let's let's all look after our motor c -clays. I don't know where Splat's gone, but he's making me nervous. Okay, so I nearly forgot to show you this. Um, to put in your brake pads, it's really, really easy. So I don't know. Turn that more that way. So all you want to do is put in your inside one first. That's always the way I did it. Um, like this. Oh, 
little spring clippers. Decided to migrate to pastures new. Um, pop in your inside one, again, like the one that goes in against your pistons, just because that's kind of more uh, hidden in there. So like, like that, and get your outside one, and just get it in there and roughly in place. Then you just want to hold the two of them down at your thumb and get your slider pin. The slider pin will just go straight through the two of them. And now you're pretty much you're pretty much held in place there, okay? You don't need to screw the slider pin in to hold them like that. They're actually held in place now, okay? Then what you want to do is just put a little dab of copper grease onto your slider pin bits. You don't have to put it on like I did there. You can put it on in, you know, a different stage or whatever else. And then I'll just screw it in. And yes, I will clean up the excess copper grease later, but it's just to basically get everything rolling. And like once once this pin is in, we're pretty much done. Now it's then it's just putting everything back together again, which is really, really easy. And then we'll we'll just do the back and make sure the back is as easy. So I will do a final tighten on that bolt when everything's back mounted again. That's them done. So now you just wanna carefully put that back on. So when you're putting this back on, just get one bolt, have one bolt prepared. Oh, oopsie. Rain is coming. Get that into position. I'm really sorry if my head's in the way. And just get one bolt in place. And once you've one bolt in place, I'm really sorry if you can't hear with the rain, but there's not much I can do about that. Now, once you've one bolt in place, like so, so we've just put back in our top bolt here. Okay, you don't need to worry about this one, just put this one in loosely, and you can check is everything aligned then in a minute, but basically what I want to do on this side now, don't forget about it, is that upper bolt that we took out just here, this kind of retention bolt, this one. I'm just gonna clean that up because it was a bit rusty and then we're gonna fit that back and screw that in then as well. So all we're looking to do then is just tighten these up. Um, there are torque specs for these. I'll put them on screen, I can't remember them. And I'll torque all these later. Um, I do like to torque these brakes because they're, uh, you know, a bit more finicky apparently. They don't like being not torqued, so. But for now, I'll just give them a tighten. A little, a little pinch. We'll also give that lower, the lower bolt down here, uh, the pin. I'm gonna give that a little pinch as well. Don't need to tighten that one too much. And then we're also just gonna tighten back up. Uh, I don't know, can you see that there actually? We're gonna tighten back up this upper bit here. Uh, again, you don't need to go too tight, but I have, I have some copper grease in on there now. And then everything is lined back up just nice. When you're done, see, can you listen carefully, see, can you hear the pistons pop back out? Because look how, look how far my travel's all the way into the, the handle. So I don't know, can you see that, but my travel now, my, my brakes, see that? It's all the way into the handle. Now it is not all the way into the handle. It's still, the thing about these is it's really squishy, but I'm just a couple of pumps on the back. And there you go. Because this is linked to brakes, you gotta do both of them. All these nasty old ones are gone. So that that's what I was talking about, see that blue one? I don't actually know, is that really a bad thing? If anyone is watching this who knows about brake pads, is that a bad thing or does it really matter? Um, look, I don't mind changing them anyway, because you know I bought new ones, so didn't know what condition these are in. They're changed now. But is this a bad thing? Are these actually bad? I don't know. Okay, so the rear is a little bit more annoying. You have to knock out the back axle. So, yeah, <laughs> whoops, slightly less ideal. So there you go, you pretty much need to disassemble all that. <laughs> I don't know, can you see that? Can you see that? So, you pretty much have to remove the whole, you know, you have to remove the back axle, or you take the chain off the wheel, move the wheel back, and then I could slide the whole thing up. So. A little bit of a pain in the ass, but once it's to this point, um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to record this. It's pretty much the same as over there. Um, same setup. At least doing this job was actually worth it because these uh, rear these rear pads, so whoever changed the front ones, 
at the time they never changed these these are these are toast these are completely gone and they aren't double h so yes i will actually have some form of brake upgrade worth it this rear bolt um was was really really bad so i'm glad i took it out and cleaned it up that's just the the little pin bolt oops so what i've done is i've cleaned up the rear brake caliper and now i'm just going to pop back in the new pads i am not uh going to lie to you and say that this rear brake is fun it's not, it sucks. Um, but I'm really glad I opened it up and looked at it because it was like those pads were cooked. So not ideal, it's a pain in the ass to do it. It's a good thing that this one has to be done again for ages. I'd say those are the original pads. I think I've just ticked over 15,000 miles on this, which means, you know, I, I'm gonna probably sell it before it gets to 30. So whoever gets this has good double H rear pads. Yay. Yeah, it's all done now, which is nice and I should hopefully have better brakes, but I'll let you know in upcoming videos, have, have my brakes improved, because I have new double H pads all around. The rears look like they were uh, original, so <laughs> they've been on there for a long time. Fact of the matter is you can definitely do this yourself. Um, it has a center stand, you just need the tools to take off the rear axle, which is, is a bit shitty. But other than that, you only need a size eight and a size 12. Was it 12? One second. Yeah, size 12 uh, spanners. You need your copper grease, you need your brake cleaner. But other than that, there's really not a whole pile to this. It's, it's actually fine, it's fine to do. So yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please let me know. At least now you're forewarned that the brakes are fine, except for the rear brake. The, the rear brake sucks. Um, I'm not gonna lie about that. The rear brake sucks. And yeah, I, I, to be honest, look, I, I could go and change these brakes. You can de-link them. Uh, obviously you can de-ABS them if you want, but I, I don't want to because this bike, like I, I didn't plan on bringing this on the track. It performed fine on the track. Would I bring it on the, tra the track again on purpose? No. Um, but yeah, look, brakes, brakes are something that a lot of people forget about. Uh, this obviously was completely outside of its service limit. It was just, it's, there's nothing left on it really. Um, so keep an eye on them. And yeah, I wore gloves the whole video except to the very end, and now look at me. Also, yes, that's bruising. Don't worry, I'm not dying. In case you, in case you caught sight of that, it's just, it's just bruising from when I fell off the bicycle. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram and you'll see these things. But yeah, that's kind of it. Oh, I have some exciting things to show you. Before you go, I have new throttle cables and clutch cable and stuff for the Jigster, so videos on that are coming up soon. And... A lovely new rear sprocket and a lovely new front sprocket and a lovely new DID gold chain. So there's videos coming up on the Jixer for that. But if you're planning on doing the brake pads on your Honda CBF 1000, let me know. Let me know was this video helpful. Let me know what you think of your Honda CBF 1000's brakes. Do you like them or do you think they suck? I think they're a little bit sucky. Not bad, just a little bit sucky. A little bit, a little bit sucky. You know, it is what it is. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful if you watched it. <laughs> and yeah, until next time, thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to my patrons. You're all legends. I really appreciate your support, as always. And yeah, until next time, thank you again. Adios. Outro career. There was only one bad thing about the replacement peg I got. So that's my new replacement one for the Jigsaw, uh, for the one that, that broke. And it's titanium colored. I'm okay with it. I really hope this one doesn't break. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna go out for a spin on the road and literally jump up and down on the thing because I do not want one to break again. And if it does break again, I'm gonna call these rear sets a bust and go to a different one. Hopefully that doesn't happen. That would suck because I spent money on these. Yeah, anyway. That's the Jigster. Some videos upcoming soon on Jigster maintenance and changing the chain and stuff. So if you want to see those, stay tuned. And until next time, thank you again. Goodbye, Outro Crew. You're all, you're all also legends. I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't, I don't even know what time it is. I just know I'm tired. But anyway, the day is done. Goodbye.